progress. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks that we can meet via Zoom in your holy Sabbath day, and we pray your presence be with us and guide us in this year's study. May our hearts be open to receive what you have for us, and uh, I give thanks that uh, for the light that you've been leading us. I give thanks for the light that you gave to Jeff Peppinger, and that uh, that light has been continuing to to uh, expand, and I pray that we can be, as students of prophecy, wise concerning the times that we're living in, and to be open to receiving the messages that you're giving us, and to be wise stewards of their messages. Uh, may we be blessed by this year's study. Guide me as I seek to present it to your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, so I have a presentation and I've called it Order Out of Chaos. And uh, this is an overview. This is where we're, I'm looking to go. So this presentation looks at divine order and structure in the seemingly chaos of, this, of the history of the world. So I begin with some quotes and then we have some examples. So like diagrams to share, and then I have some observations leading uh, to current times. And then I have uh, further considerations of Odelio Magnac's study uh, concerning the vaccine mandates. And then I have further considerations of Colin Joseph's study, uh, Dividing the Gold. Um, I have quite a lot of uh, slides in this, so um, it might be quite some time, but I could maybe uh, go quickly through some of the examples um, rather than dwelling on them. I think some of them that you, uh, people may have been aware of, you know, have covered them in uh, the table history presentations that I did with the uh, Theodore's line uh, video um, channel um, and have shared them on the WhatsApp chat of Call to, Call to Unity. Uh, but maybe some people aren't aware of them, and uh, we can maybe look at some of them as well. So I'll just have a, a few examples. Uh, I could have put a lot more, but uh, I have quite a lot to get through here. So I'll just begin with some quotes. And so the, the principle here, we go to Genesis chapter 1. We have, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So here we have the principle of uh, chaos and order coming out of it. So without form and void would be the chaos, and then God begins to, to create light and defy deferment and so forth, and that's how uh, the six days of creation uh, comes, to, comes to be. And uh, We're also aware of ordo ab cao. It's a Latin expression meaning order out of chaos. So it's a motto of the 33rd degree, so a Freemasonry. And the invention of this motto is attributed to the Supreme Council of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite. So that's from Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. So this would be like a counterfeit uh, order out of chaos. Uh, just with going on in the world today, we see that there is, uh, things are getting more and more chaotic. It, there's behind the scenes, I believe there's uh, things going on that uh, enable a sort of an elite to, uh, to, to dominate over the multitudes and uh, that's through deceptions and so forth. And, uh, but I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm more dealing with the, the order of God um, from of the chaos of history. So of Ezekiel's vision by the River Tibar, we are told, as the wheel-like complications were under the guidance of the hand beneath the wings of the cherubim, 
So the complicated play of human events is under divine control. Amidst the strife and tumult of nations, he that sitteth above the cherubim still guides the affairs of this earth. So the complicated play of human events, the strife and tumult of nations, we can see an equation and equating with the chaos. And then we have God above the affairs of the earth and under divine control that uh, he has everything is order. And uh, he who slumbers not, who is continually at work for the accomplishment of his designs can carry forward his great work harmoniously. That which appears to finite man's minds entangled and complicated, the Lord's hand can keep in perfect order. And another quote here, there were wheels within wheels in an arrangement so complicated that at first sight they appeared to Ezekiel to be all in confusion. But when they moved, it was with beautiful exactness and in perfect harmony. So looking at uh, history behind, behind us, it uh, can seem like just random events. But uh, there's a lot of structure and order in it. Uh, when we come to God's word, uh, he's revealed to us in this year movement and through Theodore and this year's study, this year particular example of uh, the 480 years when the land did not rest. And that because of that there, we had the 70 years of Babylonian captivity. So we taught there you have Leviticus chapter 25, verses two to four, where it talks about the land was to be worked for six years and then rest on the seventh year. And then two Chronicles 36, verses 20 to 21, uh, says there, and then that had escaped from the sword, carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the, the Lord, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill, fulfill three score and 10 years. And understanding that the, uh, the reign of the kings of Judah was a period of 391 years, that will take us back to 977 BC, and then we can count the 120 years for Saul, David and Solomon, and that brings us to 1097. And uh, from Daniel's captivity from 607, going back 490 years takes us to 1097. And that uh, fits in with what uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 10 to 14 talks about uh, when Samuel uh, was told to relay to the people who had asked for a king. Uh, the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And he was to appoint captains and set them to his ear, to the ground to reap his harvest, uh, to take fields and vineyards and olive yards. So you have a reason there for the land uh, not resting on the seventh day because of the, the king being more um, taxing the people. And so you have that there reason. Now, this is uh, uh, the chronology of uh, Edwin Thiel that we find in Wikipedia. And uh, if you use his chronology, he has the kingdom divided in 931 BC. And that takes you 120 years then, will bring you to 1051 BC and the anointing of Saul. And so if you apply that 490 years, that will take you to some time likely when Samuel was judging in 1097. And uh, you don't have that beautiful exactness that Ellen White was talking about with the wheels within wheels. It, it's again, it doesn't provide any, um, any sort of uh, beauty there to, that, uh, to the words of God. It just kind of um, does violence to God's, to these two, to God's, hand throughout history. And we can see that again with the 390 years of Ezekiel chapter four, verse five. Uh, you have 
In Ezekiel chapter 4, it says, 390 days, so shall thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And Ezekiel, he's prophesying the siege of Jerusalem that uh, began in 587 BC. If you count back 390 years, it takes you to when that uh, kingdom was divided in 977 BC. But with Edward, Edwin Thiels, he'll take you, uh, then 390 years will go back to when David was ruling for 34 years. Um, again, there's no uh, ram, no um, beautiful exactness. It's just uh, like a random uh, day. It doesn't provide any meaning to them 390 years. So some of these here we can, uh, we're familiar with, these examples. We, we see uh, the 2520 prophetic mirror structure that, uh, that he's led this movement to see and how God is ordering uh, the chaos of history. So we should be familiar with that. So we, I can flick through a lot of these examples quite quickly. The uh, 2520 for Northern Israel of Hiram Medicine, that uh, he was able to see that from 538, you have 1260 years of people persecution. And before that was 1260 years of pagan persecution. And that has uh, been sort of like a counterfeit of the week of Christ. And uh, that the cross divides into two periods of 1260 days prophetically, or sort of like roughly. We know it's not exact, but it's uh, uh, typical. Well, maybe not typical, but yeah, it's not exactly the days, but it's, uh, it's there as for our understanding to understand it that way. And with the pattern of Christ, uh, the Antichrist again follows Christ. Uh, Jesus was born 4 BC and has 30 years of preparation before his baptism. And you have the 1260 days to his death, resurrection, and ascension. And likewise, the papacy had 30 years of preparation, beginning in 508 with the paganism being taken away, and then 1260 years, and then 1798, you have a, a deadly wound was death, and that uh, is healed at his resurrection. Ellen White uh, makes that clear in Great Controversy 578. She quotes Revelation 13.3, and she says, in the new world, the papacy will receive homage in the honor of the paid, in, in the honor paid to the Sunday institution that rests solely upon the authority of the Romish church. And then Sension, uh, I put there for the the worldwide Sunday law, so uh, that would, uh, that's my thinking. Really, it's uh, you have there Revelation thirteen verse um, sixteen. He causeth all to receive a mark in their foreheads, in their right hand, or in their foreheads. So, other examples uh, we see here from the first time prophecy which we find in Genesis chapter six, verse three, there's 120 years until the flood. So in that time, Moses, oh, sorry, Noah is building the ark. And then it's uh, 977 years then to the Exodus and 1533 BC, where you have the golden calf being set up while Moses is in the Mount Sinai. But it also is 1,533 years to end the kingdom divided in 977 BC. And you have two golden calves there uh, set up by Jeroboam and Dan and Bethel. And uh, either side of them, that 1,533 years, you have 120 years for the, uh, the ark being built. And then the 120 years from Saul, David and Solomon. So is everyone familiar with these here diagrams? Yes. Yeah, I've seen them. Okay. So I'll maybe not uh, spend too much time on this. Um, so from the birth of Noah, you have 480 years to that prophecy of Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And that's uh, 120 years then to the flood. And then it's 777 years to the birth of Moses. And he lives for 120 years. And then you have these 400, 
80 years from 1 Kings uh, chapter 6, verse 1, that takes you to the temple, to temple construction. And the midpoint there is 2001 BC, which sort of hints of uh, 9-11, 2001. And uh, this year is a span of 1977 years. And um, it's my understanding that Jeff um, was converted in 1977. So I don't know whether I just, I just put that on of interest. So from the first biblical time prophecy again, of the 120 years, it's um, there's a there's a yeah to the flood. Uh, it's then 457 years to when uh, Isaac is mocked by um, Ishmael. And then, and that's in 1933 BC, but also from the flood, it's 1933 years to 457 BC and the decree of Artaxerxes. And that begins the last biblical, uh, takes you to the end of prophetic time in 1844. So you have from the first time prophecy there and the end of biblical prophetic time in 1844 being connected. And if you take away when that first prophecy was given in 2510 BC, and you take away 1844, it gives you the number 666. And if you multiply that 120 years by the last number there, the 2300 years, uh, gives you the number uh, 276,000. And to me, I, I connect that with uh, Acts 27, verse 37, when you have 276 souls on the ship. <clears throat> so uh, the next uh, example, uh, 1533, again, the first biblical time prophecy. And we have them, um, uh, 1533 years takes you to 977, and you have 391 and years and six months, or 391.5 years. That takes you to the last king of Judah, a captive. So that would be Zedekiah. And then the last biblical time prophecy revealed in scripture is in Revelation 9, verse 15. And we have 391 years and 0.5 months, or half a month. And you have then from August 11th, 1840, 1533 days to October 22nd, 1844. And the end of biblical prophetic time, and the square root of 1533 is 39.15. Goes on a bit, but that's the first four numbers. It sort of connects with these here two numbers aligning. Uh, the Christian Church and Israel. So as Israel pro aged 147, he prophesies over his 12 sons in 1731 BC, and then. It's going to be 147 times 12 uh, years, so that's 1,764 years, or 2520. Uh, sorry, 252 times seven. That takes you to 34 AD, and then you have the Christian Church. Uh, the, the same period of time goes to the time of the end. The midpoints of the Great Jubilee and the fifth and sixth trumpets. So um, the Great Jubilee, which William Miller preached, he had that begin in 607 BC, uh, the beginning of the 70 years captivity in Babylon and Daniel being taken captive, and that ending in 1844. But he had it at their time, ending in 1843, when he preached about it. But the midpoint there is 619 AD, and you have uh, 1200 and 25 years either side. So you maybe see a symbol there of December 25th. And then in the fifth and sixth trumpets, as according to the 1843 and 1850 charts, they have it beginning in 606 AD and ending in 1844 as well. But the midpoint there is uh, 1225 AD. And you have 1619 years at either side of that. And another, just an interesting point, if you add 777 years inclusively. From that midpoint, it takes you to 2001. 
So we have here how Joseph's life parallels uh, divided Israel to the decree of Artaxerxes. So you have 300 years lining up with Joseph's 30 years when he was mere prime minister. And then Manasseh, he's taken into captive, captivity in Babylon. And then it's going to be 70 years to the Babylonian captivity. And then you have parallels the seven years of plenty. You have 20 years then till Jerusalem's besiege, which parallels the two years to when uh, Jacob joins Joseph. And it's going to be 130 years then to Artaxerxes' decree in 457 BC. And Jacob, he's aged 130 years. And then you get five years then, then of the famine left, which parallels the 50 years to when Cyrus is enthroned in 537 BC. And then the, um, so this is the, the 70 week prophecy of Daniel chapter 9. We know it's divided into 49 years, 434 years, and seven years. So that would be seven weeks, 62 weeks, and one week. And uh, the first um, 490 years, in a sense, we can find in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 4, verse 24. And it applies to Lamech and it says, If Cain be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy sevenfold. And we have another Lamech in the Bible. And it says, and all the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. And so if we do just like a simple math, if we multiply the 49 years, which is a, a jubilee cycle, by the seven years, which is a sabbatical cycle, we get the number 343. And if we add them, if we add that number to the 434, we get 777 years. And applying that from beginning in 457 BC, That'll take us to the Sunday law of Constantine in 321 AD. And Ellen, Ellen White, she comments on this here. She says, the first public measure enforcing some Sunday observance was, this, was the law enacted by Constantine, AD 3321. This edict required townspeople to rest on the venerable day of the sun, but permitted countrymen to continue the agricultural pursuits. Though virtually a heathen statute, it was enforced by the emperor after his nominal acceptance of Christianity. So this here Sunday law, I believe, is typifying the Sunday law at the end of the world. So in, in a sense, it typifies the close of probation. As the 490 years took you to uh, AD 34, and the close of probation for ancient Israel, these 777 years takes us to the Sunday law, of Constantine, which typifies the Sunday law of the United States and the, and the close of probation for the Seventh day Adventist Church. Uh, just another point there if you uh, have applying the 49 years at the beginning of that cycle to 49 years at the end, uh, you have a period in between there, which is 34 times seven years which again uh, connects to the week of Christ, 34 AD, then seven years ending. And there's some websites will give Constantine actually being born uh, in 272 AD, which would be 49 years from the Sunday law that he uh, pronounced. And uh, But I didn't put it in here because there's some, um, some various websites would give other dates but it'll be uh, in around that their time. Uh, from 457, um, sorry, I have here a 457 and a 1938 date span correlation, but then 187 and a 77 year mer. Okay, so I'll just uh, explain this. So Methuselah, he's 187 years when he's born. Uh, sorry, 137 years, um, when uh, Lamech is born, and then when Lamech dies at the end of 777 years, it's then 1938 years to when Artaxerxes uh, gives his decree in 457. And then we can apply that 777 years that I just brought to view to Constantine and the Sunday law. And then we can apply another 187 years to when the daily was taken away in 508. And to go back to where Lamech dies, 
it's the 457 years to when Isaac was born, and that's in 1938 BC, which is a, a date that connects with the span of 1938 years as well. So uh, significant dates in 1844, we should be aware of them. First day of the first month, first day of the fifth month, and 10th day of the seventh month are brought to view when they are paralleled with 457 BC. Uh, the first day, the first disappointment parallels Ezra leaving Babylon, the midnight cry when Ezra arrives in Jerusalem, and then the cleansing of the sanctuary to end the decree of Oryx Xerxes goes, goes into effect. So I'm just uh, highlighting these here uh, dates. Uh, we know that's the 19th of April, 15th of August, and the 22nd of October. And we also have the significant date of July 21st uh, being uh, midway. In 1844, uh, Elle might comments on that. She says, uh, in the summer of 1844, midway between the time when it had been first thought that 2,300 th days would end, so that would be April 19, or and then she says, and the autumn of the same year, which would be October um, 22nd, uh, she says, to which it was afterwards found that they extend it. The message was proclaimed in the very words of scripture, behold, the bridegroom cometh. So we can say that there's another significant date there. That's the uh, 21st of July. And we know that's a period of 187 days. And if you add up the first day, the first month, and make it like the number 11, 54th month, number 54, et cetera, uh, they, all, they all add up to the number 187 as well. Uh, another significant date in 1844 was the 21st of March. So uh, this is William Miller's uh, date that he had for Christ's return. So he, he says here, during the year 843, uh, the most violent denunciations were heaped upon me and those associated with me by the press and some pulpits. Our motives were assailed, our principles misrepresented and our characters traduced. Time passed on and the 21st of March 1844 went by without or witnessing the appearing of the Lord, our disappointment was great and many walked no more with us. So another date I'm adding here is uh, Samuel Snow's last letter being uh, being published before midnight. So that was uh, July 18, 1844. And I got a parallel these here then with the, the years um, dating uh, beginning with uh, 321 AD with that Sunday law of Constantine and that uh, matches March 21st with Miller's date there so you have a 321 there uh, symbolizing that 321 AD and then it's 187 years uh, to the taking of away of the daily and I've lined up 187 then with the 18th of July 1844 you have that 187 connection and then it's 217 years uh, to 538 and the papal dominion begins or supremacy. And that's on the 21st of July, 1844. That's paralleling uh, that mid, midway date or midnight. And then the M3 days difference um, connects with a 30 years difference between 508 and 538. And then if you add, uh, 240 years from 538 and an inclusive reckoning it takes you to 77, 777 AD. And it's 24 days then from an exclusive reckoning. So just not counting the dates themselves, but just the, the days in between to the 15th of August, 1844 and the midnight cry. And then it's going to be another 70 prophetic days to uh, the 22nd of October. October 1844. And then if you add up 700 years from 777 AD, it takes you to 1477. Well, I have here a connection here to Jacob. He's age 77 when he flees and marries, which connects to the midnight cry. So he, he marries when he's 77 years old. So it's quite lining up with this here, 777 AD. So you just have an extra seven at the end of it. And then we had seen then um, that, that when he dies, then 70 years and 12 sons later, 
is aged 147, and that uh, connects to about 1477 AD. And we've seen that the 147 times 12 takes us to 34 AD and the total probation for ancient Israel. And I understand that to be on the 10th day of the seventh month when Stephen was stoned. So that would be paralleling then the 22nd of October 1844, which we know also was on the 10th day of the seventh month. And that whole period uh, then, well, actually from, from 1477, uh, it's another 321 years to 1798. And so you have a 320, uh, 321 AD as a date, and you have 321 years as a span at the end of it, taking you to the time of the end. And that whole period is 1,477 years. And you can mark uh, 1,022 years from 777 AD to 1798, which uh, is symbolic of October 22nd, 1844. And that is, uh, I think, 1,022 years is uh, inclusive reckoning. And we've seen this here, number 1022. If you add up the, uh, go back to again to the 70 weeks prophecy, and if you add up the 49 years and then the 483 years to the 2780 way mark, and then the 490 years to AD 34. So if you add up the 49, 483, and 490, it takes you to, uh, it comes to 1022, which connects to the end of the 2300 years on October 22nd, 1844. And also as the span, um, 457 BC, 777 years to 321 on the Sunday law of Constantine. But then it's uh, 457 years, uh, inclusive reckoning to 777 uh, AD. Not noticing any, bringing out any event, but just uh, saying that the, the date itself is uh, significant. And then we discuss that 1,022 years down to 1798. And then just to finish off, we have the last date is. Uh, April 19, and if you go back uh, 90 days from July 18, 1844, Snow's last uh, letter, uh, it uh, takes you to April 19, and if you go back for, from 508, it takes you to 41980, so it just requires a, an American date writing method to, uh, to adjust to these things. And uh, so that's 90 years inclusive then uh, from the date 419. And again, not noticing any a particular event in 1419 AD, but it's just symbolic of the April 19 date in 1844. And then it's 98 years then to Sunday Law in 321, which parallels the, the 98 of the 1798 at the end. And uh, and this another, I think this is my longest, the longest one that I've found. Structure S is 52,086 years. So you have there Enoch being born, he's the seventh from Adam. It takes us to the formation of the Seventh day Adventist Church. So you have that seventh at either end. And then it was 65 years when uh, Methuselah was born. And then it's 187 years to when Lamech was born. And then it's 2,390 years to this year midpoint, 781 BC. Again, not uh, identifying any specific event, but it's just as a symbol, it's 187 in reverse. And uh, 2,000, um, 2,390 BC was when the flood occurred. And it's going to be from when Lamech was born, uh, 700. And 81 years until that flood. And then coming to the other side, it's 2,390 years to when the King James uh, was published. Now it's going to be 187 years to when uh, the time of the end in 1798, followed by 65 years to when the Seventh day Adventist Church was formed. 
And from that midpoint, if you add 777 years, it takes you to the birth of Jesus. So observations leading to current times. So we're familiar that after 1844, there was a 19 year period that takes us to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So this is, we, were began, we began to see that there was time after 1844 that was noticed. And then we noticed that there was 126 years that took us to 1989 and the fulfilling of uh, Daniel 11 verse 40 and 126 years uh, connects us to the Shagels in uh, Daniel chapter 5, Mini Mini Tegel Eupharson. And it's uh, a 20th of the 2520. And uh, this is a, a recent diagram I, I came up with that just sort of parallel Joseph. He has 30 years when he come, becomes prime minister, followed by seven years of plenty, or 25, 20 prophetic days. And then Jesus, when he's born, you have 30 years, followed by the week of Christ, the seven years there with the cross in between. And his 30 years can be divided into 12 and 18 years, divided uh, by the Passover. And then you can go back 46 years uh, from the first Passover he attended when he's in his 30s. Uh, that takes you to the building of the temple. It's mentioned in John chapter 2. And then with this year movement, uh, we have 1989 to uh, 2019. Uh, that can be divided the 12 years and 18 years uh, by 9-11. And then we have 252 days to the July 18 date and the prediction unfulfilled. And either one there, you have 11th of November 2019 as well, prediction unfulfilled, which uh, parallels the, the below uh, the Millerites. I have 30 years from uh, the Battle of Plattsburgh to the unfulfilled prediction in 1844 in the spring. And then it's 187 days to when the prediction was unfulfilled again in um, October 22nd. And we can go back 46 years then to 1798. Now, uh, Ellen White has a, a chapter called the Prophecies Fulfilled. So, but I'm just using it in the prediction that they um, gave was unfulfilled, so but there was a fulfillment of prophecy at that their time as well. And then uh, with David, you have 30 years followed by uh, seven years, um, beginning from when he began to rule from Hebron and then from when he began to rule from Jerusalem. But it's also seven years and six months, or which we could say seven years and 180 prophetic days. Uh, in another version from 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11. So we have that July 18 symbol there, or 187 day symbol. And Ezekiel uh, from 622 marks his 30th year to when he began to prophesy, and then he is in vision for seven days and he's made a watchman. So you have again that 30 and 7 uh, symbol. So we move on to some further considerations of Adelio's observations surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and the mandates. Any questions, anyone? Is everyone sort of familiar with them diagrams? There's something in the chat before. So, okay, am I able to use a pointer to show what I'm talking about? Okay, <laughs> uh, I try to do that. Sorry, I might have went kind of quick there for people. Okay, so uh, further considerations. So Odelio uh, identified a lot of connections with uh, July 18, the number um, 187 connected with the pandemic and the enforcement of the vaccine mandates. Uh, he identifies patient zero being uh, on the uh, November the 17th. And if you multiply 11 for November, multiply by the 17, uh, it, takes us, it gives us the number 187. And then it's, it's from that date, it's 278 days or 18,720 hours 
to the enforcement, which was due to be occurring in January the 4th of this year, but that never occurred. And he used the example that uh, we mark 1888 as a significant date. Uh, but the Sunday law never occurred there, but it has it's still significant. And then it's 718 days then to when the um, when the declaration of the vaccine mandate occurred. So that was November the 4th, uh, 2021. So we have that uh, July 18th symbol there. And then from when the pandemic was declared in March the 11th, you can have you have at 187200 minutes, 138 days to July 18. And he added these here days up. So you get 138 days, I'm sorry, 130 days, 780 days, one day, and 718 days. So giving us a total of 1629 days. And this was kind of like a new number he brought up, and it had some interesting. Um, numbers connected to it when you took away from it or add it to it. So uh, he took away the 718 that gives us the number 911. And then he added the number 360. And he gives a sort of uh, his justification there for doing so. I'm not going into that there, this is on the screen. Uh, it says, uh, uh, give us a number 1989. And then if you add 381, it, gets, it takes us to the year 2020, or the number 2020. And um, certainly we didn't have any biblical justification for this year number 1629. Um, but if we go to these year 390 days of Ezekiel lying on side. So this is the 21st of July, 592 BC. And he's prophesying on the fifth day of the fourth month, and he lies on his side for 390 days, beginning on that day. That takes us to August 15, 591. So we have a, a midnight Christ symbol there. But he's prophesying uh, the actual beginning of the siege, which occurs after a, three, a period of 390 years. That began in 977 BC. And we can also see in that date in First Kings, it marks out the 15th day of the eighth month. So again, another symbol of the midnight cry. And uh, this is when the siege occurred on the 5th of January, 587 BC. And uh, this next diagram shows that this year was 1629 days from when he began to prophesy um, in 21st of July, 592 to when the actual siege actually began. And if you add up these, these 390 to the 1629 days, uh, we have the number 2019. So I'm asking the question here, could 2019 be typified by the siege of Jerusalem? And I have some recent uh, newspapers Articles, this is the Washington Post says, Shanghai's COVID siege, food shortages, talking robots, starving animals. So connecting this year COVID-19 to the siege. Uh, another headline, this is in the BBC. COVID in Sydney, communities feel under siege as trips deployed. So it talks about how certain areas were treated like second class citizens and sort of like under house arrest, under lockdown, as you would be in a siege. There's a title of the book, Lockdown on India Under Siege from Corona. And we also have uh, events in this year, event of the siege being uh, an opportunity in a sense for the lates to try to bring a, a solution to bring their order out of chaos. So Klaus Schwab, he says the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine and reset our world and uh, create a new world order. 
Uh, maybe someone else uh, volunteered just to read Prophets and Kings, page 452 for me, please. In the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his host against Jerusalem, to besiege the city. The Egyptians endeavored to come to the rescue of the beleaguered city, and the Chaldeans, in order to keep them back, abandoned for a time their siege of the Judean capital. Hope sprang up in the heart of Zedekiah, and he sent a messenger to Jeremiah, asking him to pray to God in behalf of the Hebrew nation. The prophet's fearful answer was that the Chaldeans would return and destroy the city. Thank you, Kathy. So here we see that the siege had begun, but then the Egyptians, uh, they approach Jerusalem, and then the siege is ended for a time, but it's going to reoccur. So this is like a timeline. Um, from when really Babylon became, became, became to be a force as a world dominating power. So we connect that to 609 BC and they defeat Assyria. And then we have 607 BC when the vessels are taken captive and the, sorry, the vessels are taken and there's captives taken from Judea. So at his friends. We have the siege then in the time of Jehoiachin, and he's taken captive in 9, 5, 597, so I'll use my pointer. And then we have this here siege. This is the one uh, that uh, that quote that Kathy just read is concerning. And uh, this is this a half year of marking then the siege abandoned, and we have the Egyptian advance. But the Babylonian siege is going to recommence, and then the city is going to be broken in the ninth day of the fourth month, and then the temple destroyed on the tenth day of the fifth month. And uh, we have Josiah also being killed just prior to this year defeat of Assyria in the Battle of Megiddo, and have these 70 years being applied for Babylon, and then there's 70 years of Israel being captive in Babylon. And this is, uh, there's two different 70 years mentioned in Jeremiah, which connects to each of these here, uh, different 70 years. So I'm lining up 2019 with this year's siege, uh, beginning, um, of, of connecting the siege beginning in 587 BC. So we, we had a reason for doing that. We've seen that the 1629 and the 390 added together comes to 2019. And that, he was prophesying the siege. So this is an advance. I'm thinking of the way mark of uh, the King of the South, uh, in a sense, coming in this year advances breaking up the siege. We also have a battle of Raphia connected to midnight. So this is the way Mark I'm, I'm thinking this could parallel. Now, I don't think Egyptians didn't really have a victory over Babylon at this year time, but they did prevent the siege for occurring for a time. Um, now the battle of Raphia, we do know the King of the South had a victory, but I don't think they, they didn't have a victory against Babylon in this year time. So just bearing that in mind. And so the Babylonian siege, I connect with the, the King of the North and the Battle of Panium, winning that battle and the Midnight Cry. Uh, the city being broken, I have lined up with the Sunday Law. So it says there uh, in Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 12, Ezekiel actually uh, prophesies uh, concerning Zedekiah, says, and the prince shall go forth and shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. So he digs through the wall to try to escape um, at this year time. And it's uh, from when he actually predicts this, it's the fifth day of the sixth month in the sixth year. And it's 1776 days, uh, inclusive reckoning to when it's actually fulfilled. 
And this, I believe, can we, we see this as being a symbol of United States of America. We have the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July, 1776. And the actual this year prophecy is given. He's told to give this year prophecy on the fifth day of the sixth month and the sixth year. But he actually, um, it goes into the sixth day. So you have a 666 symbolism there if you continue to read that in chapter 12. But then that would be, if it's going to count it from 666, uh, would be one day less here. So that's why I want it to sort of 1776 days there to be emphasized. And this year involves a wall. So Ellen White comment, Prophets and Kings, she says a breach has been made in God's law. The wall that he has placed around his chosen ones for their protection. The breach made in the law at the time of the Sabbath was changed by man is to be repaired. So we can see there an issue of the Sabbath repairing the breach because there's a Sunday law. So I'm connecting it, connecting it with that. And then connect the close probation with the temple being destroyed on the 10th day of the fifth month, as it was also in 70 AD by the Rome. So Going to the other end of the, the line, I've lined up the defeat of Assyria in 609 with 1989 and the fall of the Berlin Wall, and then the seven year captivity in 607 with 1991 and the end of the United uh, USSR. And you have a two year period in each of them, and we know that that is a period of 777 days from the fall of the Berlin Wall to the end of the USSR. USSR, okay, and uh, it's 70 years as well. Here, sort of, you have that seven and the seven symbol that takes us to um, the reigns of Darius and Cyrus, which already we already had connected to 1989. And uh, Josiah is killed here. I've lined that up with uh, the death of R.H. Pearson. And he was the 16th Seventh-day Adventist president. So I have lined up here the Judean kings. And you find that the 16th uh, king of Judea is Josiah. And he lines up with Pearson. So that's another reason why we could connect 1989 with uh, 609 BC. And I have here included Adelio's number again with the numbers that he brought up. So we have there 1989 being emphasized with that plus 360. We have 9-11 then being connected with the siege of Jehoiachin. So as it was, you have 10 years then from when the, the captivity of Daniel took place in the seven years in Babylon. It's going to be uh, 10 years then to 597 BC. And so likewise from 1991, the end of the USSR, it's 10 years to 9-11. And uh, that was one of the dates that Delio brought out. And then I've had the, the, the siege at 26, two, well, sorry, 1629 to 2019. Um, just another note. Uh, Ellen White, she connects the Ark of the Covenant, actually being hid during this year time, to just the context of where it is anyway, in Prophets and Kings, to when the Ark is uh, actually being hid. So I'm not too sure, I'll just add it there, so maybe it could have some uh, symbolism that we can think about. Um, I had just a few thoughts, maybe, or, or could, there, could, be, could it be... Maybe the ark replying to God's people being hidden in some way, or the constitution of the United States being in some way taken down. I'm not too sure during this year time when Egypt advanced. And I don't understand also the Shekinah. If the, if the ark was going to be removed from the temple, so the, the Shekinah glory would likely depart there as well. And uh, Ezekiel talks about that then going to the Mount of Olives and sitting there for the time before it leaves. And uh, we know that Jesus, when he left the temple, he went to the, uh, to the Mount of Olives as well. 
and a sort of, sort of paralleling that she cannot leaving the temple. So uh, we move on to Joseph's uh, study. Any any questions or comments from the previous uh, study? Do we think this is are we in the actual siege time? And is Egypt has Egyptian advance prevented that the siege that we're now going through? Uh, since I uh, have the King of the South and since came and um, eased the siege. I I do believe yes, and um, I mean I'll, I'll save it till the end of the presentation. But um, so far, um, I can some lights are going on for me. So I thank God in you know even in in advance because there's a lot of stuff that's you're putting um, together that's just making so much sense, so much most sense um, that it's adding. Um, so thanks in advance, praise God. Okay, thank you for your comment. So I have uh, further uh, considerations of your study now on the 25th of December, 2021, entitled Dividing the Gold. Um, now we had previously uh, lined up the Medo-Persian kings with the President's United States, so that Xerxes lined up with Donald Trump. Um, we should be familiar with that. And um, um, we previously lined up, again, Xerxes with Trump and his specific uh, years of his uh, pres presidency with the years given in the Book of Esther. So in the third year of his reign, uh, this is Xerxes, he made a feast many days, even 104 score days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast seven days. So if we understand that Xerxes had an accession year, and then his first, second, and third year would parallel with uh, Trump's fourth year. So we have here Trump's fourth year, sorry, um, his first, he begins to, uh, to in a sense, reign or become president on the 20th of January, 2017. So we get 2018 then would be Xerxes' uh, accession year, 2019 and 2020, we begin Trump's fourth year. And then we have that feast beginning 180 days, and that takes us from January 20, 2020 to July 18. And then it's gonna be another seven days, uh, the other side of July 18. So sort of, so July 18 is right in the middle of that M2 feasts. And we have Trump when he's inaugurated, uh, being 70 years, seven months and seven days inclusive reckoning. Or we could say it's just his, his seventh day of life. And um, if you go back making these 180 days a day for a year, 180 years then would take us back to 1840. And again, this would be the 26th day of the fourth month when the 391 years ended. And then you would have another 15 days to the to 11th of August. And if you could also uh, day for a year, add it seven years from this year date, it would take you to 2027. So just putting that in of interest, not predicting anything, but just, of, uh, just for consideration. And there's an Elmite quote, we're not read at all, but uh, Prophets and Kings, page 605, 606. She says, the decree that, I'm just reading the bold, the decree that will finally go forth against the remnant people of God will be very similar to that issued by Ahasuerus against the Jews. So that Xerxes uh, will issue like something very similar to the, uh, typifies the Sunday law. To secure popularity and patronage, legislators will yield to the demand for Sunday laws. So in a sense, we can see a symbol here for Trump putting in the Sunday laws. That was our, was our understanding uh, prior to him being uh, defeated in the previous election by Joe Biden. So going to uh, Colin's study, he first 
brought us to understand again the symbols or the, the nations represented in the statue of Daniel chapter 2. So we're familiar with them, Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, uh, Imperial Rome, and Rome divided, the Ten Kings. So I'm just going by what the 1840, 1850 chart this is. And he lined that up with the image again in, in Daniel chapter 3. Um, we know that's uh, the Sunday Law in the United States. And they are the first, and it says they are foremost in stretching their hands across the Gulf to grasp a hand of spiritualism and to reach over the abyss to clasp the hand of the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in trembling on the rights of conscience. And maybe just someone else read this here manuscript for me, please. History will repeat itself. In this age, the great test will be upon the point of Sabbath observance. A rival Sabbath is exalted, as was the great golden image in the plain of Dura. Leaders claiming to be Christians will call upon the world to observe the spurious Sabbath that they have made. Okay, thank you. So we can see that this here image of Daniel chapter 3 is the Sunday law. And we know that begins in the United States of America. So we can apply that statue to the United States of America. And uh, we've uh, called on them looked at Revelation 17 and we have the riddle there uh, and it's very similar to the image of, John, of um, Daniel chapter 2 and we understand that uh, John he's carried off in the wilderness we understand that's the 1260 years from 538 to 1798 based upon Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, which says the woman fled into the wilderness where she has prepared a place of God that they should feed her there 1,203 score days. And then we see this here woman as uh, the mother of harlots. So she has apostate Protestant churches connected to her and she's drunken with the blood of the saints. So being a mother and having these apostate Protestant children and being drunk, uh, points to John being at the end of these 1260 years, namely 1798. And then the one that is, Ellen White uh, clarifies in 1798, what nation of the new world was in 1798, rising in power, into power, giving promise of strength and greatness and attracting the attention of the world. The application of the symbol admits no question, one nation and only one, meets the specifications of this prophecy that points unmistakably to the United States of America. And so uh, Colin, he lined up this here image then of Daniel chapter 2 with this here riddle and the application of the nations there. And he again lined that up with the image of uh, chapter 3 and have both here then aligned, but them all aligned again with the kings of Daniel, chapter 10 and 11. So uh, we have that five fallen, Babylon, etc., and the presidents here, and then the kings. Now I haven't included Biden, or I've sort of left these two out for the time being. Uh, so we know that Alexander, is followed follows Xerxes and the and the the people identified in chapter eleven of Daniel chapter sorry in, in Daniel chapter eleven, first four or first three actually first three and four, and so that would align with the United Nations, and the others not yet come, and then in first four it talks about Greece then being divided, and that aligns with uh, Rome being divided. So this is the application then that Colin made. We have um, Donald Trump then being the one is, and then Joe, Joe Biden then being the other is not yet come, but when he cometh, he shall continue a short space. And then the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. 
be applied that to the, the papacy, but he's applying it to Donald Trump. So is that a correct summary of what you've uh, have presented then, Colin? Correct. Okay, just so uh, no, uh, I got you right. Okay, so I just want to relate my experience between the 25th and 31st of December, 2021. So this 25th of December came at the end of 777 days, which we had marked as beginning on the 9th of November, 2019. And there's uh, um, this year was divided up in the 252 days and 525 days. And we have each been with July 18, and each was a Sabbath. You have here another symbol of 777. And this was a, a diagram I produced that day. At the end of these 777 days, I came up with a diagram that has connected to 777 years to the Sunday law of Constantine happening in 321 AD. So it just seemed to be very interesting. It just seemed as if to me, God was leading, opening up something at this year time. And um, that connected to the two Lamex as well. And um, after a few days after that, um, I began, I under, understood then from when Trump was inaugurated, uh, when he was 70 years, seven months and seven days, it was a period of 1800 days to December 25th, 2021. And uh, with the, I've included here the 777 days here. So we have like combined like a July 18 symbol with these here two spans of days. And then I began to line that up with the time of the flood. So you have Lamech, he dies age 777. And that connects with Trump being with his, his age, 70 years, seven months, seven days. And then it's five years to the flood, which is, if you take it, prophetic times, it's five years is time, five times 360 is 1800. So that takes you to, to the time of the flood and you have two periods there of seven days, the animals entering into the ark and then there's a shut door and you have seven days afterwards before the actual flood occurs. So that aligns with uh, December 25th as typifying in some way a shut door or the flood in some sense. Um, typifying even the Sunday law, which we had seen uh, with the, the 777 years to Constantine from 457. You could also have it uh, other ways. You know, you could have it the 1800 days to the flood and then the 777 years to when Moses was born, paralleling, parale paralleling the 70, 777 days from November 9 to December 25th. And with Moses, he was uh, sort of floating on the water, well, on a, on a basket. And we know that's maybe like a type of ark floating on the water at the, at the beginning of them, 777 years. <clears throat> and if you see the 220, 252 days into July 18, and if you go back a bit, you have the 252 years to when, at the age of Enoch, to when Lamech was born, and the symbol of July 18 there with uh, Methuselah, his age, and uh, Adelio, he recognized that uh, if you take the numbers, that the, if you, the sort of the L being the 12th letter of the alphabet and so forth, and you multiply them, you have the July 18, 2020 symbol there with that. The, with the name Lamech. So we have also the number eight um, associated with Noah in First Peter chapter three, verse 20. Someone else, someone want to read this for me, please? And in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water, the like figure were into even baptism, thus also now save us. 
and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Okay, thank you. So we have the eight souls being saved there, uh, going in to the ark, and that figures baptism, which also has been typified by, or in a sense, was a, that, that replaced circumcision of the flesh being cut off in the eighth day. The symbol eight, and we know that's a symbol of resurrection. And on the 25th of December, 2021, was the 20th day of the ninth month in the biblical calendar. And this connects with Ezra chapter 10, verse 9, which uh, connects to the flood. It says there, Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the 20th day of the month. And all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. And we know that when the flood came, it rained uh, 40 days. So we have that great rain symbol. And actually, if you go back to the, when this occurred, it was actually on January the 6th in uh, 456 BC. So January the 6th, we also understand as a, a significant date in connection with Donald Trump. And uh, if you take the number Trump, the, as we did with Lamech, uh, if you take the letter T, R, U, M, P, and convert them to numbers, as they come in the English alphabet, it comes to the number 88. And this was uh, Trump's statement on the 8th of August. So you have another 88 symbol. That's when his uh, house was um, raided by the FBI agents. Um, and he says that... Um, it was an attack by radical left Democrats who desperately don't want me to run for president in 2024, especially based on the recent polls and who will likewise do anything to stop. And uh, it just continues on there. So we have a, an 88 symbol there and it was 880, 880 days since the pandemic was declared on the 11th of March, 2020. And this is an old magazine, uh, relating uh, to, it says uh, the title there is The Resurrection and Ascension of Donald Trump. So just sort of connecting some resurrection symbols to Donald Trump. And uh, also in the flood, there you have Methuselah dying uh, just uh, a short time, before, on the, certainly in the same year as the flood. And he was the eighth of Adam, eighth uh, descendant from Adam. Then you have the eight souls being saved there. So you have an 88 symbol there. <clears throat> and so um, this is a, I've just tied this here 1800 days in. We connected that with the, the years of Xerxes and the 180 days and the seven days um, feast that we find there. And I actually posted this here comment on the 31st of December. So uh, I uh, I will just read this here. I posted this diagram on Sunday, so that's the one I just showed you. It showed 1800 days from Trump's inauguration to December 25th, 2021. We see a symbolic 777 days in Trump's age at the beginning and 777 days at its end. With our application of Daniel 11 verse 2, Xerxes typified Trump. Xerxes had another 80-day feast followed by a seven-day feast. Likewise, we see similar numeric connections with the above structure. When I posted this, I had not yet seen Colin Joseph's presentation on December 25th, 2021, where he made an application that Trump would be the eighth of the seven kings of Revelation 17, verses 10 to 11. Is this diagram not a support for Colin's presentation in that it demonstrates that Trump is still part of the prophetic picture? and the structure as it happens ends on the date of Colin's presentation. Is, it, is this not support, as Colin suggested, that Trump will indeed decree the Sunday law as typified by Xerxes? The decree which is to go forth against the people of God will be very similar to that issued by Ahasuerus against the Jews in the time of Esther. So i just make that quote sort of similar to what we had read out earlier, that uh, Xerxes... Uh, 
sorry, how that decree typifies the uh, the Sunday law. So returning to uh, Colin's study, dividing the gold. Um, so I brought this here. I had this here up before, so we were addressing Revelation 17. And the one is being the USA, and the next to, to come is the United Nations, and then the eighth is uh, Rome. So I have here where I believe uh, John has, has been taken. It says, I, John, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So have that. You have this here trumpet being emphasized there. And uh, John is going to be taken to 1798. Now, for him to be in the wilderness and to say that one is, so he's like in between the time when the papacy has just died and the United States is just rising. So he'd be really just at this here line. That's, that's where he's being taken to. That's my understanding. So Jeff, uh, when he was in Lambert Church on the Lord's Day, being Sabbath, the 9th of January, 2016, he gave a prediction uh, concerning Trump. So in a sense, Jeff here is taking us to the 20th, 20th of January, 2017, and to this here line again between Barack Obama and Donald Trump. And when you parallel 1798 with 1989, you have 777 days being connected with the time of the end. And you have there on the 20th of January, 2017, Trump being 70 years, seven months and seven days, inclusive count. So you have that 777, 777, you can maybe connect to this here, each line, each way mark here. And uh, someone want to read for me Esther, chapter three, verse 13. And the letters were sent by post into the king's province to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, and to take the spoils of them for prey. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, the 13th day of the 12th month was uh, the date that the, the Jews were decreed to be killed. So this is paralleling the, the Sunday law. And um, from Jeff's prediction concerning Trump, it's uh, 12, 13 days and 12 months, inclusive count, to Trump's first day in office on the 21st of January, 2017. And he's, he's then 70 years, seven months and seven days old when he begins. And the, the title of Jeff's sermon was called A Certain Sound. And this is a phrase Ellen White uses many times, connected to a trumpet. And I have one example here from Maranatha, page 15, verse three. So 153 maybe might be interesting. So she says, the voice of the true watchman needs to be heard all along the line. The morning cometh and also the night. The trumpet must give a certain sound, for we are in the great day of the Lord's preparation. And uh, so I have some other uh, comments here. The was, is not, yet is. As with the beast, so with his image, question mark. So we know that the papacy here uh, was uh, connected with uh, Revelation 17, verse 8. Uh, it says there, the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. So Rome here was, uh, was up until 1798, and then is not, we have United States. 
So Rome's diminished at that their time, but it's to be yet is. And uh, I have here the presence here as well. So I have a, just identifying here the presence. If we're going to apply that uh, to Trump, uh, the one is, is connecting with Donald Trump that was. And we're, we're now in the time where we say Donald Trump was and is not, is the time when Joe Biden is now currently the president and yet is. So Donald Trump's going to be the eighth of the seventh. So there's maybe like a bit of a issue. How can, be, how can Trump be one is, but also was? So um, have you had any thoughts about that, Colin? Before I try to give a, my understanding. Well, so when um, for me there was is um, is not yet is so um, my first understanding or my primary understanding is the papacy um, was before 1798. It, it, um, it was um, a combination of church and state. Is not it loses its its um, civil power. Um, mm -hmm. Yet is it's still a church. It's still a so what it needs it's a civil power to put it back in place. So the same with Donald Trump um, was you know I mean he's there. He's a politician. He um, he is there, but he doesn't have that um, role right now. So he was. That's before uh, you know Biden um, is not. You know what we can see that was is not altogether again the loss of that power as the president. Um, we can see yet is he's still a force to be reckoned with. Um, he's still a politician. He still um, has his support based and everything, just like the paper see. So, so um, there's more to it, but that's just simple. Um, taking up, you know, first the paper see and then Trump. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a quick question. A quick question mm -hmm. Have we ever looked to see Biden? Does he even fit as false murders? Well, that we normally apply by Biden to, or sorry, the false murders would align with the um, Clinton. Oh, okay, right. Actually, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. One of them, I can't remember exactly which one. So anyway, what I, I'm saying is the one is, is when Trump was inaugurated. And that's 700, you got that 777 symbol there. But the 25th of December was when uh, Colin could say that he was and is not, and yet is. So to me, there's a, like a structure there. That you can maybe apply to, to them to sort of like uh, periods. At the end of it, he, you could say, the start of it, you could say one is, at the end of it, he was and is not, but will be. So that's when we sort of said kind of like yet is, he kind of is, is he's going to be there again to bring in the, the Sunday law. So that's just a, a thought that I had concerning how to sort of remedy that one is and then how he was same time. And uh, just Daniel 8 verse 19 uh, says, and he said, behold, I will make thee to know what shall be in the end, last end of the indignation, for the time the point at the end shall be. So Jeff uh, applied this here indignation to, to, 20, to the 2520 and the last end to 1844. So because this is a lot, it doesn't mention a first end, but because there's a last end, he uh, thought there would be a, like a first end, which he applied to 1798. Um, whether he was correct or not, I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, that's the application that Jeff made. And uh, my sort of thoughts was this, uh, when we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, says, we shall not sleep but we shall be all changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. 
for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So making an application, Christ returns at the last trump term, not in his first. So I know that applies to uh, trumpets, but that's just like an application. I, have, I just had a thought concerning. So that was my the end of presentation. I can stop sharing. Any questions or thoughts? Um, for me, um, I just want to um, thank God for your presentation, um, the time you put into it. And, um, you know, one of the things that is really sticking out, you know, um, um, that Babylon had to, you know, in a sense, stop pursuing, um, you know, to take um, Judah to deal with the um, Egyptians. And when, so when you look at that Egypt, you know, the wool, um, when you look at the king of the South, um, what they're doing, it's Egypt, it's the wolves. And um, so you can see that, but, you know, what I keep thinking of is that the, you know, there's the short space, you know, um, I, I, everyone, should see that in a sense Biden will be there for a short space. But I I think everyone maybe, you know, when you go study that 11 chapter of Daniel, that is almost reached its complete fulfillment. And in verse 25, um, something will be done that has never been done before. Um, his second, um, you know, oh, verse 24, I should say, 25 24 25 he comes back peaceable but something will be done verse 25 that has never been done before and um so all of this is connected to the sunday law for us yes trump is involved but it is the sunday law we're sitting between verse 40 and 41 i just want everybody to keep that in mind the sunday law is soon upon us so we need to be aware we need to be with God. Stephen, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, for if someone is having difficulty understanding the eight is of the seventh, can you sort of explain that or shed some light on what you understand the eight is of the seventh? Thank you. Yeah, well, we had seen that the papacy was and where it's going to resurrect, in a sense, at the Sunday law. And uh, it's, uh, in a sense, it's the United Nations is going to be the seventh kingdom typified there. And so the, the papacy then is going to be, in a sense, ahead in exalted over the ten kings. It talks about the ten kings shall get their power onto the beast for one hour. So... Uh, so in a sense, the papacy was of that previous seven. It was the fifth kingdom. And so it will be again, in a sense, the, the eighth kingdom. It will be, uh, be resurrected. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. And um, oh, sorry, one more question. How does... Um, we're trying to use the application, right, of the riddle, right? The riddle, Revelation 17. Mm -hmm. So if someone does not see and thinks this is a rest in the scripture, how can you, from what you've seen, what you've studied, what you've understand, how can you sort of let them see is the application of the riddle? you know, the yet is, was, and is, and all that. How do you help them see that, please? Okay. Um, yeah, nothing really for it but to sit them down and have time to pray and study what, you know, prophetic history depends on their knowledge of, of the Bible. 
uh, they already understand Daniel 2 and you know that would be a, a point that we begin with and then to see connect that then to Revelation 17 but uh, yeah it depends how much they already understand of prophecy and um, Yeah, okay, no, 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 that's good. So uh, basically it's going back to the board and saying it's not it's not changing what, you know, when Daniel was told, you know, this is a head of gold, this is this and this is that, but it's a matter of um, having them go back and see how, you know, just relook and restudy. Okay, thank you. Carolyn, Carolyn, just want to, what you just said there was an application. No, I know. Uh, what, you, what I'm saying, you said it just now, you said in the book of Daniel, where uh, Daniel's pointing out to the king, thou art the head of gold. That is an application. Mm -hmm. so, and, and I think everything that is done with numbers, uh, with all the 777, the 1533, all those things, those are applications as well. Yes. So, I mean, making applications is what we do. So making an application of Revelation 17 to Daniel 3 is the same thing. It's an application. That might help, maybe. Yes. Yeah, maybe if we pray and, you know, and then have a great discussion afterwards would be, would be good. So, um, Brother Stephen, if you can pray and then we can have a discussion. All right, okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks that uh, you're our God, that you love us and are merciful to us and have tender care towards us. And may we honor you with all our being, all that we have and are, are from your hand. I pray that we can be vessels for your glory. Give thanks for the light you've been shedding and pray that uh, the Sabbath day we can further receive fellowship with one another and with you. And um, pray that uh, you help us in our infirmities and uh, strengthen us and heal us where we are broken. And I pray that uh, as we seek to be students of prophecy, to understand what is to be, to be a watchman on the walls and give a trumpet a certain sound to pray that we can have your Holy Spirit um, in a great measure upon us and guiding us, directing us, giving us words to speak. For we can't do it on our own strength. We need your Holy Spirit abiding and we ask for the latter in your great power abiding upon us to be witnesses for you in this here world, soon to perish. We ask these things in your mighty name. Amen.